Welcome to the Gate 7 International Podcast, your official English source for all things Olympiakos FC and Greek football. The first day of training is when I realized, oh, this is why they win the league every year. When I, I spoke with Kevin, if I going to sign or no for Olympiakos, I say, you are pretty good deal, like my friend. I can't speak, I'm sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, my Malaka! Saga para poli. What's up, guys? Adi and Costa here, Gate 7 International. A very, very, very disappointing night tonight, unfortunately. Something that we're going to get into. We're going to get your opinions on it. We're going to talk about it. That's why we're here. That's what the space is here for. We're going to get into all of that. But before we continue, everyone, uh, don't forget, if you haven't done so already, don't forget to like and subscribe uh, all and visit all of our channels uh, everywhere on social media. If you are an audio listener, we have a number of uh, podcast listeners that only tune into us uh, after the fact on audio. Leave us a review, five stars if you can, because that's how the algorithm spreads us to more and more people. We've recently been listed now on iHeartRadio and Amazon Music for the podcast, so it's been getting the audience we've noticed getting a lot bigger as well just for audio listeners. So, guys, help us continue to grow the red and white community even in the dark times because if we can weather the dark times together, imagine what happens when we have great times. So hit the bell if you want to be notified anytime we go live, but don't forget, like, subscribe, and comment. If you guys are shipping internationally, whether you're going to or from Greece, shipping anywhere in the world, visit our friends at Piraeus International. They will help you whether you're relocating for good, whether you're just shipping a few things, whatever you need, olive oil, marble, marble you name it, they'll ship it. Visit them at www.piraeusintl.com and see how for our friends can help you. Lastly, for your betting guys out there, don't forget our promo code, Gate 7 INTL, that is the code for betus.com.pa. They will give you a deposit match of 125%. So if you deposit 100 bucks, they're giving you 225, getting very aggressive and trying to help you guys win money here with our analytics that we get, trying to help you make the best bet. We throw up the data before games, we throw up the data after games, and you guys can use that maybe to help win some money. So check it out. Gate7intl is the promo code at betus.com.pa. Now, Costa, we talked about how important this game was today. Huge derby, not just because it's against Falk, but because of where Panathinaikos were in the league. They won. That put them even further ahead. This was a must-win game. Mm -hmm. And we ended up losing in dramatic, annoying disappointing fashion tell me tell me what you thought man just give me your thoughts well i mean uh yeah i mean this is a game that uh, makes many think what's next uh where do olibiakos go from uh, here uh it's always quite an interesting situation when olibiakos are not doing well and pundits journalists fans players uh veterans uh former players legends they all start thinking are olibiakos not going to win the title this season because it is quite it, it is quite common for Libyakos uh, to win the title, but let's take it all from uh, from the beginning. I mean, the match started with a bombshell, and that Pepiel was left out of the squad. Uh, questions Crazy. still uh, questions still linger as to why that decision was made. Because apparently, I mean, I spoke to a few journalists, a few colleagues of my own. They don't know why that happened, so there doesn't seem to be an issue with his fitness or anything like that. So we had that bombshell starting out. Uh, uh, for this very, very uh, important game. Uh, Mitzel went for a 4-3-3 formation with Kostas Jolakis back in goal instead of Paschalakis, who made his debut against uh, against Karabag in, um, in the Europa League, uh, uh, in the Europa League uh, away. Marius Vrusai at right back, Sokrats Papastathopoulos at centre back with Usain Nuba and Ole Greabchuk uh, on the left. Uh, Juan Gimbom, Jan Villa, and Agibu Kamara started in midfield. Uh, Gary Rodriguez, uh, James Rodriguez, and Bakambu uh, spearheaded the attack up front. 
Uh, the game started very poorly with uh, Sokratis Papastathopoulos' own goal after only nine minutes. Uh, quite a centre-forward-like header, or, or, or only he did it on the other end. Uh, but then James Rodriguez responded with a header of his own, which kind of kind of took the kind of took the clock back, didn't it? Back in 2014, when he did the when, when he stood out at the World Cup with Colombia, incredible finish, a lovely cross by Ole Grebchuk, incredible finish by James, powerful header. Uh, that's one goal and one assist in three matches with Olympiacos right now for James Rodriguez. Uh, Olympiacos looked lively in the first half, but then Pau came in stronger in the second and managed to. Uh, to, to regain the lead with Khaled Nari uh, after 56 minutes. Then there was that penalty call, which Pauk had a very good reason, in my opinion, to call for that, uh, when uh, Nelson Oliveira was practically sandwiched in between Ba and uh, Jolakis. Referee uh, pointed, at the, um, uh, pointed, at the, at the, pointed at the spot, but then he, che he checked VAR and decided that there's no penalty there. Olympiacos had some really good opportunities later on to score, missed some... Missed some sitters, one with Gary Rodriguez, who although had a, he did have a tight angle, he he was in front of open goal. And then there was a Youssef El Arabi, who, well, couldn't finish in front of open goal, basically, as well. Uh, quite, a, quite a poor performance from the power goalkeeper, Kotarski, as well. I mean, Olympiacos should have taken their opportunities against them. But, I mean, the, the record shows Olympiacos lost another derby, two out of two derbies, if you count the Aris game as a derby. Lost two out of two. Both those losses were uh, in derbies. Uh, quite a disappointing performance. And the question is right now, what happens next? What do you make uh, from that performance, make out of that performance? So the performance today was exactly what I was worried was going to happen. Not because I thought that we were going to play poorly. I actually thought that there were long spurts of this game that we played fine. I, I, I still think on a whole, I thought we were the better team. I mean, Balk had two, one, two opportunities, like the first goal, like not even their opportunity. That was Socrates. They had like one real opportunity that they scored from. And here we go. We had plenty of opportunities to score. We didn't capitalize on them. Bakambu missed one. El Arabi, you brought up, missed one too. The, this was just one of those games where uh, it's, it's, it's one of those results where people say it's football. You know what I mean? We had opportunities. It, it, you know, you play FIFA. You're the guy that gets 30 shots, and then the other guy gets one against you. But you're the one that loses one nothing. It's one of those things, man. Um, and uh, there, it it sucks. It it really sucks. And I was so worried because these games against Bach are are like that. I mean, these derby games are very scrappy like this. You could be the better team, and you could end up losing. Olympiacos has been on the other side of this too. Before Marinaki bought the team that season before, we were we were worse than Panathinaikos, but we beat them twice in those derbies. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And it's uh, it's it's it just sucks because there were whole times in this game where I didn't know what Bach's game plan was. I mean, very clearly, once they got once they got the goal, they sat back. I mean, they, it was very clear that they were there to defend, to not to lose. But we and we, we didn't do enough. And there's a there's other things also I want to address too. Um, I, I mean, the comments are already getting in on it, but the, a lot of things that frustrated me. And but and and but more just focusing on the game, there were just some things that didn't make sense. I mean, sitting Pep BL. I'm going to assume that something had to have happened in the locker room outside of the pitch because he is one of the most talented players on this team. He makes he can make something from nothing. I mean, look, you get at set piece opportunities in Europe and he's almost scoring goals. You, you're leaving him on the bench. Uh, I mean, Ba, I was worried that this was a type of game where we would see we would see the, the Ba we don't want to see. And that's what we saw today. Ba was very poor. Uh and and the other thing that bothered me too was I, I love I love Zolakis. I love I love the kid and I wanted to see him play. But in a scenario like this, we have seen young talent get obliterated in scenarios like this. And that's what I worried about. I hope deep down I believe in Zolakis. I, I believe he has talent and I thought maybe he could do something today, but I worried that something controversial or something stupid could lead to a loss today and he gets and he gets looked at in a negative light not to be fair it, the the second goal the save wasn't you know i mean i, I can put that on him too um the it, but 
this was a scenario I did not want to see him get in because games like these are when we see our youth and our young products get benched and they lose confidence. A lot of a lot of that is stuff that were I worried about today, and I, I saw it all come true. Because then what happens is look 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 at the chat. So much look at the negativity. Not that it's unwarranted either. Because in, in situations like this, these scrappy situations, this team, th and, and there are positives because when we took the first goal, the team fought to get the equalizer. We have to say that. That's something that when um, when Corberan and Martins were here this season before that, this team would not have recovered from that. They would have just gone. It probably would have ended one nothing, maybe 2 nothing. Bach. But they fought back. And Michel has instituted that He's instituted that fight. He's gotten that back into them, that mentality. But there's just so many other issues. There's, there's so many other things around here that are problems that are, are, are exacerbated with, issue, with things that you see today. So I, I don't know how you see that, but that's, this is all stuff I worried because like this was, had this been, had, had we even drawn maybe, this probably yes, would have been like, yes. hey, okay, you know, know what sure. I mean? But I'm I'm disappointed, man. I don't know what else to say. I'm disappointed. Yeah, I mean, you touched on this. It's just that, um, uh, well, Mitzel is well known for his uh, for his uh, uh, powerful character, and we all knew that when he arrives, he's going to try and instill a winner's mentality. He's going to bring that Real Madrid mentality that you know we're like we're that Real Madrid of Greece. We don't lose, you know, we're not afraid of anyone. You don't mean anything to us. We're going to go out there. We're going to destroy you. Uh, but still, I mean, we saw that with Corberan. We saw that with Pedro Martins. I mean, you look at other teams, like you saw, you look at Real Madrid. They, for years, you would know that Modric, Casemiro and Cross would start in midfield. You always knew that Karim Benzema and Vinicius would be in attack with someone else. Uh, you look at Leicester, the way they won in 2016. They had basically the same lineup in every in every game. But with Olympiacos, there are so many players, so many players. And it's just impossible to create any partnerships, impossible to create a, uh, to, to create a trio in midfield, impossible to create connections in there. Every single game, Olympiacos fans will stress as to whether Juan Guimbom is going to start. Every Olympiacos fan will stress if Pepiel is going to start. Every Olympiacos fan is going to stress as to who's going to start at, at left back, at right back, even in goal. It, it, even in goal right now, it's just that it's just so impossible to put a team together, even though there are so many players and maybe there's too many options. But I would like to talk more about Pepiel right now because, I mean, Pepiel was very much a luxury signing for Olympiacos, a 26-year-old player with incredible stats from Copenhagen, incredible stats in Europe as well. The guy could not stop scoring or contributing goals for Copenhagen. And instead of building a team around a player like him, who's only 26, this guy could go for a lot of money in two years' time. A lot of money he could go. Either he doesn't play or he just doesn't play in his own position. What do you make of Pepiel's um, run at Olympiacos right now? It, again, it's one of those puzzling things, and when, and in a previous episode, I I tried to reason it by kind of saying like, look, he he's so good, and with with some of the poor, the really poor play we've seen from our wingers so far this season, even if he's not the best at that position, if he's giving you more there than they are, and you have somebody else that can still produce at a high level with without him playing kind of in that center of the park. You know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. what you know, like kind of how James plays, who was also who was great today, by the way. Yeah, I have to say, was. Um, was great. but that that's kind of how I saw it. But he's just not. Uh, we we do this with so many players. Zinkernagel is one of them. Here we are. We, we he you know Cor now again. That's you know Cor he's not he wasn't Corberan's pick. He was Martins's pick. But Martins didn't play him in his position. Then Corberan brings him in, or Corberan takes over. Doesn't play him in his his natural position. And then here we are, we're loaning him back because we say he's not good enough and he's playing great in Belgium, which in my opinion is a tougher league than the Greek league. So oh, yes. it is what it is. It is there. And I think Pepiel now is, is suffering from that. And, and I'm curious if, if maybe the reason he wasn't played, if it, um, again, this is just me thinking, you know, based on the context clues that we're seeing, I think maybe there could have been an issue or something that 
off the pitch that maybe led to Michelle benching him. And if there was, I am more than likely going to believe that it's probably as a result of him not playing in his position, which is unacceptable. I mean, you saw what this guy did for Copenhagen. It didn't stop. He, he started this year the same way. And now he comes here and all of a sudden he has problems. Zinker Nago came here and had problems, leaves, and 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 he's he's playing well. Hugo Kuypers couldn't produce here. He leaves, and now he's playing amazing. He's playing very Henry well. Nakuru comes here, can't perform, leaves, goes back to Turkey, and he's performing. It's it, I'm starting to believe that it's not, oh, this player wasn't ready. This player wasn't ready. And it's I, I think it's more of an issue of how what we're getting out of our players. It's unfortunate, but this is the situation we find ourselves in. Indeed, indeed. I mean, I got to ask you right now, uh, title. Is that happening? Could it happen? Well, you know, that's one of the things. It's one of the things that we discussed. It was one of the things that uh, we posted about prior to going live uh, that we would discuss. And it's, is the title over? We're minus 10. Mm -hmm. From the top. Not a good look. I've seen weirder things happen, right? Okay. It's not in three and a half games out is not the end of the world. Uh, Panathinaikos is stacking up the injuries. They had a great game against La Mia. I still don't believe this output that they have is sustainable. Uh, we posted some of the stats before. They have a great defense. Don't get me wrong. I just don't mm -hmm. think their, their level of offensive production is sustainable based on what they're doing. I think they will come back to earth. When when will they come back to earth is beyond me. Uh, but I think they will come back to earth. But in that time, the pressure is on us. We can't drop points. If If we want to believe that the season isn't lost, we can't we can't drop any more points. I mean, every game is a final. I mean, every game should have been a final based on what we've seen the last couple of weeks. But if you want to believe that the title's within reach, every game is a final. And I'm sorry, the way the season's going, okay, Panathinaikos may not have the depth. Better team than Olympiakos. Ike. Ike is a team that scares me. With the new stadium, the way they've been playing, their offense especially, that's the team that scares me. If Panathinaikos doesn't, if Panathinaikos doesn't do it, I think Ike will, uh, and that's that's kind of how I see it. How how do you see us? How do you see the season? How do you see the title hopes? I just it just really feels like this Olympiacos team. It just really feels like this Olympiacos team can lose to anyone. Really, it doesn't. For years, we've been seeing this Olympiacos team that will go out and rest players and still destroy the Greek opposition. Whereas right now, I just wonder about the confidence levels. I spoke to a fellow journalist, George Sanakas from Sport FM, and he told me that actually Mitzel managed to create a, a much better atmosphere in the dressing room. Uh, that's what he told me. Uh, but still, it just doesn't really feel like Olympiacos come out thinking, you know, we're going to destroy you. We are, you're, you're, in our, you're in our house now, and we are going to pummel you. It doesn't feel like that at all in Europe no. and in Greece as well. It's like a mojo is missing. I just yeah. can't see how Libyakos have the confidence, the drive, the power, the strength to actually push for a title. I don't know how many people are have the, are in the mental state of actually going with this. And to be honest, sometimes I even wonder, can Olympiakos even finish second in this league right now? The January transfer window will be very important, but Olympiakos... Yeah. They need a, another center back, but they also have to sell. Like this team needs to be trimmed. It needs to be trimmed yesterday. And in one month, they're not going to be able to do this. Maybe the World Cup, you know, a big X factor this season is the World Cup. Maybe the World Cup is going to help. And Olympiacos don't have a lot of international players that are going to be gone uh, during the um, during the uh, the World Cup. So maybe that's Mitzel's time where he's going to, you know, crack the whip, put them all together put everything in order, and maybe Olympiacos come back stronger than before. But that's a huge if. If Olympiacos managed to actually pull this off, and that's a big if, it's the World Cup, I reckon. That's the X factor. I guarantee we see a, a clear out. That's that's how I, I see that. I mean, there's no... You guarantee way. it. You guarantee a January clear out. It has to be. It has to be. There's no... I mean, l listen to what they've said at the club, right? Michel... Too many players. He said there's too many players. He has to cut players. Mm -hmm. It's bad for both. There has to be a clear out 
in the winter. Forget the summer. We're too far away from that. But these players that aren't part of the team, especially the ones that are now shafted to the B team, they just we need to give them a place. Like, doesn't matter. Work out a place for them to go so that they can train and figure it out. There has to be a clear out. We need like look, there's the way I see it, there's a couple, there's two ways you can go about this, right? If you believe, if you believe that there's a chance to salvage something, whether it's in Europe or in Greece, right? Mm -hmm. If you believe that there's something to salvage, you keep the players that you know you want, that you want to build something from. You don't keep playing different 11s in every, in every league. This team apparently isn't good enough to do that. We'll never make it past the playoffs and get out with that mentality. You keep the players you want as your core. Now, obviously, there's some players that can't play in Europe because of the way things shaped out. But you look beyond that. If we can secure that conference league in January, you're building from that. You're you're promoting those players to the to the European list that weren't on there. Now we only get three changes, so they have to be three good changes, and we go from there and we and we see what happens. But if you believe you can salvage the title, you believe you can salvage conference league, you have to you have to build from that core. So that's how I see it. And Costa, I want to get your thought on that as well. And then I think there's chats popping off. We got to answer some of these questions. Of course, of course. Well, uh, I mean, you mentioned about the Ukrainian core unit. It doesn't seem like that's in the works right now. I mean, I just mentioned that uh, before every game, there's always this stress. Is Juan Guimbom going to start? Is Pepiel going to start? Uh, who's going to start on the left? Who's going to start on the right? What's going on with Marcelo? It, it just doesn't really feel like a core is being created right now. Sure, it takes time, but it is taking quite a lot of time. We saw Doi starting it against Karabag, and now he wasn't involved and against Falk. Sometimes the formation changes as well. Uh, Olympiakos bought two right backs, and now none of them are available uh, for uh, for those big games. It doesn't really feel like a, a core is being created. There's so many questions right now. So many decisions as well that are being made by the last three managers at Olympiacos. We use the term apsychologito in Greece, which uh, the best tra uh, translation I could use is unexplainable, but it's so much more than that because you just can't analyze that. You cannot approach it, approach that sort of mentality. Uh, the title is a big if this season. Um, uh, even second place might even be a big if, unless we see something drastic happening. I think the right thing that the Olympiacos need right now is consistency. They need to get a few wins in a row to actually convince uh, themselves, more importantly, that they can actually turn this around. And obviously, you know, it's very interesting to see where this informed Panathinaikos side can go. Uh, one thing I want to get from you, because, I mean, obviously, and I said this with Costa with a C the other day, and I mean, you're the same, you're, you're of the same school as us. Olympiacos have inadvertently created quite a spoiled generation of fans, you know, that are used to winning the title in December. They're used to practically walk in the last 16 of a major European competition uh, with some amazing managers, even greater players. And right now, because, you know, the situation is so unbelievably bad, <laughs> There's a lot of negativity right now. Do you think that negativity is warranted? And to what extent? Um, look, there's been worse times at Olympiaco, so I'm not going to lie there. But part of part of when you build something like this, right, when you are winning and winning and winning, okay, yeah, it's normal. Maybe you have a, a misstep here and there. But what we're experiencing this season isn't just a misstep. It is a collapse I mean, now maybe it's a little early to say a collapse because a full collapse is we get kicked out of Europe before next, you know, the spring and we don't win the title. We don't even come in second. We don't get a Champions League spot. That is a full on collapse. And it's not without warrant. I mean, people are rightly upset. I mean, look, let's look at look at the comments. Look at look at some of these comments. And I understand the frustration. Manos G7. We don't give an F about the championship and this team anymore. Uh, concept couch and I actually have a similar frustration with this statement too. It's annoying that we threw away the match at Karabag to focus on this game and then we still lose. Kevin Milaras, guys, Europe would be a blessing. Ben De Rosa, no way we win the title. It's going to be Ikerpak. The this to go from a team that 
looked like it had the ability to take that next step to be beyond in its own tier outside of Greece. We talked about this last season and the season before that Olympiacos was on the precipice. It had started something great with Martins. Now, what happened at the latter part of Martins wasn't by fault of the structure. They had something there. There was something that the problem was, whether it was on Martins or the scouting department, whoever realistically was at the meat of picking those players, there was a disconnect and we got more pessimistic. We abandoned the approach of looking at young young players with promise that fit in our system. And we started to go after maybe some names, more, more names, bigger wages, more veteran type players. And look where that got us. It's gotten us to this point. We're here. It all came to a climax at the, at, at this point now in the season, at the, in the season, everything kind of the, the, the straw has broken. The last straw has broken the camel's back, so to speak. And it has led to all of this. It's completely, it's not without warrant at all. Everything that's being said here, everything that's being said here by everybody here, everybody that is getting upset, everybody that is saying that, uh, I mean, there's people here, I mean, going after Marinaki too, calling for a manager change. I understand the frustration. I do. I understand the frustration. It is with warrant because a lot of bad decisions. Ownership decides who to trust and who to put in charge of things. They trusted the wrong people. Now they have to figure out who they're going to pick to put in charge to bring it all together. Now, people getting more and more upset as the as the season goes on. Look, the bed's been made. Now we're trying to fix the disaster of a situation. It is hopeful at best to assume we fix the situation. What What will really show us the the metal of the ownership is how it gets managed for the summer because we've made the changes now there's changes now in the back office this season is what it is maybe we can find some patches in the winter but their metal will be if in the summer of the coming season everything turns around this now season is about managing what we can getting results where we can, maybe trying to find, you know, if Michelle can find a way to win games, find a core. But if if this if it doesn't go well again next season, then we start asking questions of the ownership in particular. One season when you've had so many seasons of success, if we're being if we're being level-headed about it, there's bumps in the road. And it's a really bad bump. It's a really really big bump. But one bad season does not a tragedy make in that respect. Well, I mean, as a sports journalist myself, I've seen greater clubs having a bad season. I I mean, look at Manchester United. Ever since Sir Alex Ferguson left in 2013, they've spent a billion in transfers for world-class players, and they they never even got close to winning the title. Arsenal are putting together their first legitimate title hunt since 2004. And the Invincibles, Bayern Munich are struggling at the Bundesliga this season. Barcelona had a had a very dramatic season last season, and you're telling me Olympiacos are not going to have a, a shocking season. This this can be explained, guys. I mean, we've said it so many times here. I'm going to say it again in case we got new subscribers, which I really hope we do. I always hope we have new subscribers in the channel. Um, Olympiacos had to uh, let Martins go. Had to let to run. Had to let Martins run down his contract. That would have seen him leave as a winner and then start a new chapter with another talented and maybe recognized manager or a project manager like Corberan. It's been so much difficult, different if Corberan took over in May and started a team with a preseason. That would be completely different because he'd have his own team. Uh, and now here we are. Uh, we, this is basically a team that has been created by three different managers. Too many cooks, too many cooks in the kitchen. Of course, they're going to spoil the broth. So that's what's going on right now. And well, to see it in a positive light, it's always better to have more than less. It's so much better to have four left backs than only have one left back. Because then if one left back gets injured, one of the other three is going to come on. But if you only have the one left back, if he gets injured, disaster. That's it. You're done. You're t- Especially if you've got big games coming up. So, I mean, like I said, there has been a, a spoiled generation created by Olympiacos inadvertently. 
But if we had a 50 or 60 year old with us, a 60 year old Olympiacos fan, they would tell us some amazing tales from uh, the Petri Nahronia, which saw Olympiacos not winning the title for 10 years because they didn't even have ownership. They didn't have anyone in the hierarchy. They didn't have a president. Right. There was no organization whatsoever in there. I've seen I've seen Olibiaco struggling in derbies, playing against a strong Panathinaikos, strong Ajax team, strong Pauk team. I've seen them getting mauled in Europe. Like when there's competition, it's a bit more dramatic. It's a, there's a lot more twists uh, twists and turns along the way. It takes a little uh, it takes a little patience. All I'm saying is that yes, it's important to criticize the team productively, uh, but you know just you know throwing it all away and just you know giving up and you know asking for people to leave the club after just, you know, a, a, a couple of difficult months, that's not a solution. No, I mean, but, th- and this is, there's something I want to address here too, a uh, comment from Concept Calcio. It's not spoiled to want the players to give the basic levels of effort and technical ability for the shirt. We're not, that's not what we're saying. We agree with you hundred no. percent. There's plenty of players that are on the field that play for that have played for this Olympiacos team this season that I don't want to see wear the shirt again. I don't think they deserve to. But what what we're saying is, and maybe maybe saying spoiled is a is a bad choice of words in a way. But what we're saying is, when you get used to your team winning, right? Like we have under the Muddy Nikes era, he's won. He's been in charge now. What is this? His twelfth season, thirteenth season, twelfth season. Took over in twenty twelfth season in charge. How many titles has he lost? Just two so far. Two, two. Go to any any country in the world and ask them if they would like to win ten of twelve years. I'm sure, I'm sure they're going to tell you that they wouldn't they wouldn't mind. Now, again, I'm not saying that you shouldn't expect that because yes, you should expect that. But when you're used to us winning all the time, it starts to build an expectation. We win, we win. This is this is the level of Olympiacos. We win, we win the title, and. The club, the ownership is included in that, have to manage that. When you get to this point and you have separated yourself and you are dominant like this, like Bayern Munich in Germany. Obviously, we're not Bayern Munich, as you say all the time, Costa. But when you get to that level, you have to continue to manage that because we're humans. We're never happy with the same. We always want more. We want more. And you have to manage that. It's not enough just to win in Greece as we've said. So if you only manage this to win and you only are building for just winning the title the next season, then it's lost. You have to build for more if that's, if you want to be successful and continue to have the fans engaged. So in that respect, that that's kind of what we're talking about. We've gotten as fans, we've gotten used to winning all the time, even when we're terrible. That it's it's become this expectation. That's why this feels worse than maybe it is in uh, in reality. If if that makes sense, Costa, did I articulate that correctly? Of course, yes, of course. I mean, one bad season doesn't bring uh, doesn't bring the end. I don't know where this season is going. To be honest, like I said, the World Cup could be a major factor because that's going to give Olympiacos plenty of time to actually get organized. That could work as a mini second preseason for Olympiacos if Mitzel manages manages this uh, finds the way to manage uh, this correctly uh but then again it's like you said man I mean uh no matter how this season goes there's there's always a way to turn next season into a grand success there's so much quality in this team that's what's yep. really baffling there's inc- there's immense quality in this team in all positions in every position Uh, But there's too many options. Uh, This is a team that has been created by three different managers. Uh, Everyone is just trying to figure out their role in this team. Uh, Let's see. I mean, like you said, I mean, even if Mitzel leaves, who's going to come? When Corberan was sacked, I heard people talking about Rafa Benitez. I heard them talking about who else? Marcelo Bielsa. They talked about Thomas Tuchel. That actually happened, and that angered me immensely. Guys, it's... No one's really coming. And it's not a manager issue. I mean, Pedro Martins lost 4-0 to Maccabi at the Karaiskaiki. Corberan got mauled by Freiburg at the Karaiskaiki. Mitzel got mauled by Karabakh. It's not a manager problem. It's a team problem. It's This is a disaster that's happened. Like you said, the bet has been made. It's all about managing that disaster. Maybe until, um, well, in a few weeks, 
when the World Cup starts. And then, you know, hopefully uh, we're going we're to see a different Olympiacos uh, come January. Let's hope so. Let's get to some of these questions uh, and then we'll close up uh, in a little bit with our man of the match coaching group. But there's a, cause there's a lot of stuff going on in the chat and I want to make sure that we address some of it. Uh, first there's, there was a question here, George Sakulas. I made sure I kept track of this. What about Bowler and Samaseku? Are they injured? I want to ask about Fortunis and Lidner because someone said we will have James. I believe James can play like a second CF and Lid Lidner has to play ASAP. So I'll tell you, uh, we discussed with some uh, Blackpool journalists um, over the course of the week about Bowler. And when the squad list for the game today was released, Bowler's name wasn't on it. They're very upset uh, because he's a young English youth prospect. They want to see him get games. I don't think Michelle rates him. I think it's pretty clear. Uh, I don't think he's rated. Samaseku, he did get thrown on the team sheet. He was on in, the bench tonight. And uh, he was on the bench tonight, too. I can't, So I don't know. I don't think he's injured. I haven't seen him. I mean, the team doesn't really have an injury list, so it's hard to say. Uh, they don't really keep an injury list. Uh, Fortunis, that's something that we were peddled over the summer, something that we were told, hey, this is something to be excited about, something that uh, he could be coming back. They said the club said happy birthday to him. They did a nice thing for him on their socials. So I can't speak to you about that. Doran Ledner, guys. Is, he's only been training with the club now for like less than a week since his injury. He just got his EU passport. We wouldn't have gone through all of the hassle and for him to get his passport if the player wasn't useful. I think Doran Ledner could be seen uh, probably on the bench and could be used, but he's only been training with the team since his injury for about a week. So I think we need to have a little bit of patience as far as uh, he's concerned. Um, we also have, uh, uh, let's shout this out real quick. Costa, of course, Costa Scorias, of course. thank you so much for the donation, my friend. Always refreshing to listen to your perspective, guys. I hope we can salvage Conference League qualification and the cup. Costa, you and you and us both, my friend, thank you again so much for the donation. Uh, guys, uh, every time we get a donation, we briefly tell you what the money is going towards as well. Um, the big thing that we're looking for tonight, uh, guys, we had some, you know, as you guys know, we we pay for these data packages. We pay for all of the system support. Everything that we do here has a cost to it that we have paid ourselves. But the next big thing that we're trying to do, which this money's going to, is uh, merchandise, T-shirts, things like that. We're trying to put all of that together. We're also still trying to put together something for TV rights. Um, sorry about that. I had like a frog in my throat. <laughs> But, no, man, it's it's amazing. And thank you very much, Costa. Thank you very much for the donation. No, yeah, please go. So, please go on, pal. Please go on. David. What, what else is the and, money going to? And that's what it's going for, helping us put together all these things. We're working out some TV rights things so that uh, for the Cosmote side of things so that we can have a way to watch Libyaco's home games easier. We're still working on that. We haven't forgot. Uh, we haven't forgotten about that. So anybody, everyone that's been asking us every time they can't watch a game like today, we... Um, we're, we're, we're still ahead of that. We're still working on that. And all of this is going to things like that. And, uh, 100%, uh, merchandise is coming. We're still working on a few things. There's a lot going on behind the scenes. Um, that stuff that hope we, hopefully we can share with you soon, but we are working on that. We're also working on trying to give you guys the best content that we always can. Um, comment here from Jason Popov, uh, at gate seven international. I believe we are going to bounce back. We can't be pessimistic. Even if we lose the championship this year, we're going to come back stronger. We are legends. We are Libyakos. I love the positivity there, buddy. I, I hope that that is the case as well. Uh, Fanis, the problem in Libyakos is not the bad season. It's normal to have a bad season. The problem is the obvious poor management and the fact that this is the second or third time this happens. I will say that we have had very poor management uh, in terms of what we've what the players we brought in and the squad management for two seasons. Um, Martins's last season, and then of course, obviously, this season, because I think the third season, every you know, with that was the COVID season, everybody had issues with that. And had the COVID season not happened, I still think this team would have been something else. Because as a result of that, Martin started to retract and trust more veteran players and become more pessimistic. Uh, is do you see it that way, Costa, or did you have a different opinion about that third season? Well, I mean, uh, for some reason, this grand uh, season in 2019-2020 didn't evolve into something great, into something big, into a, 
some sort of um how can i say this um I think just something great, really. Uh, COVID played a huge part in this. A lot of players got sick. Uh, a lot of players that should have been sold weren't sold. So there was a yeah. lot of profit that didn't come into the team. Uh, and from then on, I do believe maybe Martins got a little burned out. Uh, Pep Guardiola talked about this when he left Barcelona, that when a manager stays too long at a club, he gets tired of that club and the players get tired of him. That was Guardiola saying it before he left Barca, which is why he didn't stay at the... He didn't stay at Bayern for too long, and that is why he could leave uh, Manchester City at the end of this season. Uh, and he said he's looking at international football. So I think that's what kind of happened with uh, Pedro Martins, right? And he did say that he did get a little burned out. Uh, so it's it, it's just the sense of, you know, I think Olympiacos' biggest opponent in the league still is Olympiacos themselves. It's just about how bad you're going to be on the pitch instead of how good you're going to be because... If Olympiacos, with all that, with all those quality players, managed to click, I honestly believe the other teams couldn't be able to hold a candle on that uh, on Olympiacos. But it's just a sense of how bad you're going to be on the pitch instead of how good you're going to be on it. We said it before; Martinez's time came to an end. Just like, it was just like I, we saw it at Arsenal for many years with Arsene Wenger. His time was obviously over. Wenger wouldn't give up. It was the same with Martins, really. I mean, he wouldn't give up. The club wouldn't see it and say thank you for everything with everything but we think we're going to take a different uh route uh and that's how it started really uh if martins had been sacked last summer and a talented recognizable manager took over it would have been completely different in my opinion right now and i do have to say this Adi, actually you know bar the world cup break which could work as a great x factor one thing that could at least turn the mood at Olympiacos, would actually be if a recognized manager took over. doesn't matter if you pay him a little extra, a lot of extra, actually. Give him the keys of Reddy and tell him, listen, I don't care what happens this season. What I want you to do is start building for next season. I want you to build something great. So like if you had like a Benitev coming in, a Bielsa coming in, a Kike Setien coming in with a lot of more money, I don't know, I don't know how much money the club actually has, and just tell them, listen, whatever happened this season, happen, whatever happens this season happens, just start building. I think that could bring some sort of uh, confidence for what's being built. Because, yes, the team still looks problematic on the pitch. Yes, we're still not getting the results we want. But look who's on the, who's on the dugout. And if we start seeing slow progress, even slow progress, confidence could start uh, coming back at Olympiacos. And people could start, you know... Uh, trusting the club and the process a lot more i uh, i hope so man i hope so i mean and if that's the case and we're rebuilding i'm with i'm with nolan or fox here if we're rebuilding for next season many young players should be playing i agree but you know what guys i have to give we have to give credit to misha where it's due right he's been playing more young players than we've seen in a while pedro martins would only throw them in in a cup game here and there I mean, seeing seeing Adres Doy playing, maybe out of position mm -hmm. for me, but trusting him, trusting Tzolakis more in important games. Rusai was done, and now he starts. I mean, more Greeks too. Like this is what we've been talking about under Corbett on. We weren't seeing any Greeks playing, but Michel's been playing. Then we had success when we thought that we couldn't win with some of these players. So. Uh, I, I, I think that that's, uh, I think that's, I think that's something to, to, to th think about. And I, I agree with it. 100%, uh, T for trap from now on, I'll start reading poems instead of watching this T. This is a better solution for my mental health. <laughs> Robert Frost, my friend, uh, can't well, go very wrong profound. With a can't go with a little, <laughs> can't go wrong with a little Cavafis. Libyakos FC Fan Club of California. Thank you guys for checking in. Been around for a long time. It's time to revamp the offseason preparation and dependence on agents who find questionable young talent outside of Greece. We haven't had proper youth scouting and development since Vermilion, who worked under Tron Solid. I am always a fan of bringing in more scouts, more people that can be data oriented. Um, so I'm I'm always I'm always about that. So you guys, I 100. 100%. 100%. I would I would hire like eight scouts. I would hire hire the biggest scouting data analytics team ever and watch the success I would have in about 3 4 years. Well, I mean your deep dives so, are something else, Adi, and we're always looking forward to your next one. 
Yeah. Well, I appreciate it. Thank you. Uh, well, guys, there's a lot of comments. I wish we could get to all of them, uh, but it is about time. It's very late, especially for you guys in Greece, especially for Costa. I don't know how you're still awake. Let's get it out of the way. Man of the match, coach is great. Costa, who you got? You're, who's your man of the match? What's your grade? I think my man of the match is Hamas. I mean, very important goal. Uh, broke his duck, which was very important after missing that offy penalty. Um, some important uh, movements, important passing. Uh, I think he, um, I think, he, I think he showed that he can uh, become something big at Olympiacos. Obviously, not in his 2014 levels, but still, you know, he could uh, actually contribute at Olympiacos. While questions still linger about the other star signing in Marcelo, coach is great. I mean. Uh, I was very disappointed with the overall result and the performance, to be honest with you. Also very disappointed that PPL was uh, was dropped for no good reason. If it was a fitness issue, then how difficult is it to just say it, you know, in the post-match press conference, listen, guys, he's injured, so he's not going to play. So I'm going to give him a C-. minus. I mean, against this Pauk team that were quite poor themselves, I mean, you can't really, you can't, there's no excuse really for that kind of performance and those kind of uh those kind of choices in the lineup, in my opinion. What about you? Uh, I'm going to echo your man of the match. I think the clear shout is Hamis. I think that's the clearest shout you can have. I mean, the he gave us the best chances. I guarantee you I'm going to see four or five key passes when the data populates. Um, uh, uh, plays that either were directly for shots, passes, uh, probably two smart passes as well, things that created dangerous situations. He is a creator. And I, I, even if he was getting tired, he was the most productive guy on the pitch. So I don't get why we got rid of him. So, yeah, I agree with you there. Man of the match, James Rodriguez. My coach is great. I'm going to say a D. Um, even even if the team did play, you know what? That kind of feels harsh. No, no, no. I'm, gonna, I'm sticking with D. I'm sticking with D. Because there were still some choices that I didn't like. Um, you know, I mean, if if he had if he did have the faith in Ndoy, I mean, I can't imagine he would have been worse than Ba today. Um, in a game like this, I would have gone with Pascal Lakis over Tzolakis, even though I love Tzolakis. I just worry about stressing these, these young Greek players out in these big derby games because this is how we see their careers get shelved. So that's how I see it. And very, very similar to your, maybe just a worse coaching grade. Exactly. From then on, it's all about patience and it's all about, you know, well, this is a bad season. The damage has been done. It's all about controlling it. And well, let's see what happens with the World Cup. Exactly. Exactly. Look, guys, we have a long way to go. No Europe this week. Uh, that's the following week. So the next game we have coming up is, I think, Sunday. If I'm not, if I'm not mistaken, here I, can, I have the schedule pulled up right here. So I think our next game is. Uh, there's no midweek, like we said. Yep, Panetolikos. Uh, we have Panetolikos actually on, on Saturday. Saturday. I, excuse that's me. Saturday. That's Saturday. So and this Saturday, uh, this is away. Uh, and that's another important because the Thursday then is Freiburg away. Exactly. So we'll see what happens, guys. Enjoy your week. It's you know thing. I I have to believe. We all have to be to believe that this is going to get better. There's enough quality sitting on the bench that this has to get better. Uh, Michelle can't fix everything in a month. Uh, he has made improvements. We've seen improvements in the data as well. So we have to believe this can get better. And it will get better for us. I, I do believe that. Uh, things are tough now. Uh, a lot of very poor things continue to happen. But I, I believe that things will get better. Costa, I know you believe things will get better as well. And guys, don't forget, if you haven't done so already, like, subscribe, follow us on all our platforms. If you're listening on audio, give us a five-star review. So that way this can get dispersed to even more people. And we can continue to grow and do bigger and better things with this. Costa, do you have any final thoughts before we close up? No, I just agree with you. Like, yeah, obviously this season is uh, shambolic. But you know what? I mean, one bad season doesn't bring an ultimate disaster for a club. You know, a lot of things have happened. Obviously, you know, there's also the Nottingham Forest thing. They started really poorly as well. So, you know, there's a battle in both fronts right now. But you know what? It's important to uh, to stick with the team. And it's important to uh, to show some patience right now. As I said, like, I truly believe the World Cup break could really work in Olympiacos' favor. Let's see. I think so too, my friend. I think so too. So we'll see what happens, boys and girls. This is Gate 7 International by the fans for the fans. We'll see you next week for the game against Panatolikos and then again for Freiburg after that. 
So until then, ladies and gentlemen, we'll see you next time. Oh, pour pas Jésus, pas